Hey hi, it's Joe. It's week 26. Week 26. And this week we're talking about family. Um, uh, so the topic outline thing is family. How they've responded, how you can make things easier for family, organisations that are helpful for this. Can't think of any of those. And your new position as son, forward slash brother, forward slash father. So your new sort of like male family role and how that feels and what that's like. Um, okay, I've made... They're not even notes, I've kind of just like prose written out what I wanted to say here by accident, so I think what I'm going to do is just read it out, so it will be like I'm just reading because I am, so sorry if that's all good. Alright, so family, they've, um, they've gradually got their heads around it. My sister and her wife, I think, have been the best in terms of validating um, and affirming my identity. My sister changed her Facebook thing like almost immediately to me being her brother and um, I, they always get my pronouns right. I can't remember them ever having gotten my pronouns wrong, and that's, I know that that's difficult, so I think that's really wonderful. Um, Jess and Kirsty, if you're watching this, I love you so much. It really means the world. Um, so yeah, and my mum and my little brother also really try, um, try really hard, and they mostly get my pronouns right, which is really wonderful. But I think it's worth keeping in mind that it's difficult when people don't see or speak to you very often, um, for them to you know, mess up less often, um, and it helps to be patient with people, I think, personally. <clears throat> in terms of making things easier, now this might seem like a weird thing to, to have put in this description for the topic, to asking how to make things easier for family, but I think, well, I'll get on to that anyway, I talk about why I think that's important. Okay, so in terms of making things easier, I think if you're able to, if you're able to, that it can be really helpful to keep communication open with your family quite early on. Um, so, like, maybe let them know, you know, I'm struggling with this, I'm, I'm questioning my gender, and then I'm feeling like I'm probably trans, and then, you know, yes, I'm definitely trans, and if you get to that point where you feel like you're definitely trans, and these are the things that I need from you, or these are the things that I want, and then keeping them up to date then on what's happening, what's likely to happen, like, if you're going to get medical treatment or not, and you know, whether you, whether, what pronouns you're going to want, whether you're going to change your name, that kind of thing. I think, I think generally keeping communication open with that can be really helpful in them feeling like they're part of the process as opposed to feeling like it's something that's just happening. I mean, it's going to be scary anyway, you know, so feeling like they at least are being kept up to date and like you care that they feel okay about it can I think be really helpful. Um, I think often that the same resources that you used for yourself can be useful for parents and for siblings of a similar age. Um, like videos, I think, showing people videos can be really helpful. Um, I th still, unfortunately, a lot of people don't really even know about anything about trans men and don't really know that trans men exist, some people still. So just seeing what a trans man looks like post-transition, if that's something, if, um, if testosterone is something that you want to do, for your, your parents or whatever to see what what that looks like happening to a person I think can be really helpful. Um, <coughs> um, yeah, so blah, blah, blah. Some family members uh, might go through like a mourning process, a grieving process. This can be quite frustrating and difficult and upsetting because at least for me personally I don't feel like a different person at all. I feel like, you know, I'm absolutely still me, um, and I haven't changed really in myself at all, except that I'm, I'm happier and more comfortable, I know myself better, so it's sort of like, hi, I'm right here, like, it's really weird and creepy that you're mourning me because I'm here, but I think people are going to have their processes, and I think all you can really do in the face of that is try and reiterate to them that you aren't changing who you are, you're just changing your body to match who you are. Um, just trying to get that across to them is the only thing that you can really do with that and just let them have that process if it's something they need. Uh, um, yeah, parents, they're, I think, likely to have had dreams and expectations of what your life would look like um, and that they're going to have to let go of. They're also likely to be frightened of something so likely to be so un unknown to them happening to someone that they love so much, someone so close by. Um, so on the one process, on the one process, on the one hand, this process is about you, and you have to prioritise yourself, but on the other hand, it's really important to empathise with what it means for the people who love you as well, um, and to try and help reassure and educate them as much as you're able to. Um, and I've also said here, like, 
<clears throat> sometimes a little patience and a little bit of tough skin might ne uh, skin now at this stage might help you losing family members altogether later on um, through just losing patience and being hurt too much. I know it's it's difficult to say that because on anyway I'll carry on. And for I'll give an example there, like with my father, <coughs> he was okay when I mentioned that I was questioning my gender. He was like, okay, you know, whatever, that's fine, whatever you need to do to be happy. But then when it became real, like a few months later, um, he'd been away, he'd been like traveling and he came back and I'd just come out of um, my GP appointment looking for a referral to Charing Cross and he called me and I was like, oh hey, like this thing happened, like I, I've, I'm getting referred, things are like actually starting to move now, it's really exciting. And he was like, what? And he just like, he pretty much freaked out. I was in tears on the phone, I was like, wow, this is horrible, he was saying some really horrible things, um, about, you know, you'll never be a man, blah 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 blah, really not very nice, ups very upsetting things to hear very early on in transition. I could very well, the way I was feeling, the way he made me feel, I could very well have made the decision at that point that he was not going to be capable of being a positive influence in my life at that point, and just cut him off and not spoken to him. I love my father very much and I made the decision that I was going to try and be patient and try and let him figure it out, figure things out and just, you know, just be there and give him whatever education he was open to and now it's, I suppose it's about a year, a bit more than a year later um, and he's getting my pronouns right, he's trying and he's doing okay. You know, sometimes people just need time to get their heads around it. However, this is my caveat on this. If family members are causing you serious harm, be that emotional or physical harm, or if they seem just completely resistant to education on this, then it might be better to at least temporarily take those people out of your life if you're able to. Um, transition does take a lot of energy and a lot of strength, and people who are stubbornly negative influences, um, they might face losing you. And it's sad, it's very sad, but sometimes you need to know when someone just can't do you any good and doesn't deserve your time any longer, at least for a while, you know. It's quite possible that these people that you've, you know, you might need to cut these people out and then a while later, <clears throat> after some time has elapsed, they are like, shit, I really miss this person from my life, maybe I need to get my head out of my arse. Um, but it might be that, you know, you just can't resolve that. Either way, you know, you've got to just kind of make the best decision for you. You've got to just try. But that didn't make very much sense. <coughs> okay, so that's the really heavy stuff. Um, the second part of the topic is your new position as son or brother or father or whatever in your family and what that's like and what that feels like. For me, really the only big difference is language, which suits me fine. I, I don't really feel... I don't buy into the kind of... Like, I wouldn't expect my family to suddenly be asking me to carry everything or expecting me not to clean and cook and stuff in the house and help out. That would really, that would be horrendous because, you know, I'm a feminist and I think that's all bullshit. So, so for me, it's mostly a language difference. The only thing that I can really think of in which my role, I do see my role changing is with relation to my little brother being a big brother to him now. Um, he doesn't really have another significant adult male in his life, so, you know, while personally I don't believe that kids need both a male and a female, like, role model, or like a father and a mother figure, I think that's, I think that's balls, I don't think you need both in order to grow up and be a good person. I do hope that <clears throat> as he gets older he feels like, you know, I can be that big brothery figure to him and he can talk to me about things that he might not be comfortable talking to females about. Um, and you know, I hope that I can. I hope that I can teach him about how to how to be a good man, resist the influences of patriarchy making you into a dick. And uh, although I'm still learning all of that myself, obviously, and always will be. Um, and I'd also really love it if I were the one who got to teach him how to shave and stuff. But that would be really really cool. All right, I think that's it. I wonder how long this was. I tried to be fast. Shoot. Oh, it's ten minutes. Okay, well, enjoy. I hope you're all good. Um, I'm going to put a petition below the one about 
I don't know if you've seen the Guardian article that was published today that's like a load of... <sighs> um, but I'm going to put a petition to that below, and I'm also going to put... Oh, quick shout. Um, I, yesterday, because I'm recording this on Sunday, yesterday I had my photo taken by a lady called Claudia Moroni, who is a professional portrait photographer working in London. She is currently doing a... Um, a project on trans and genderqueer people, um, and doing like a portrait project thing, um, and I think she's still looking for models, so I'm going to put her info in the box as well, if you are interested in modeling for her, you can get in touch. Alright, oh, she's super lovely, and like really kind and sweet, so I would recommend it. She might feed you, she fed us. It's nice. Tofu wieners. She's vegan, so I mean that's a pretty good character reference, I think. Anyway. Um, thanks very much for watching. Stay cool. Waiting for it to get to 11 minutes.